Tonight's cornerstone verse is coming from Luke 22, verses 39 through 44. And it reads, Then accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went as usual to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, Pray that you will not give into temptation. He walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Following up, it says, an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Tonight's topic is hard conversations. We're going to be sharing some really practical ways to help you manage hard conversations using the Bible to guide us along the way. I'm Shay. And I'm Quinn. Welcome to Midnight Mastermind Ministries Podcast. Let's get right into the show. Well, Shahidra. Yes, Quinla. <laughs> when we started um, with this topic this week, yeah, hard conversations, which is one of the ones that the Holy Spirit led you to, um, I asked you, well, what kind of scripture reference do you feel like the Holy Spirit is leading you to? And I thought it was very interesting when you mentioned this one. So tell us a little bit about what the Holy Spirit was showing you in this particular scripture that made you connect it to hard conversations? Well, I thought it was really interesting that that was the first um, instance in the Bible that the Lord kind of brought to my mind. And ultimately, it's probably one of the hardest conversations that is had in the Bible. And when Jesus is having this conversation with the Father yes. about going to the cross and laying down his life. And I thought about that and I thought, well, you know, if we're going to talk about hard conversations, we need to talk about the answers mm -hmm. that we don't necessarily like, right. but we have to make a decision on how we're going to move forward. Absolutely whether it is in our power, mm -hmm. whether it is in our control or not. Yes. You know, what's interesting is when we, before we read the scripture, I had forgotten about the piece about the angel coming. Yeah. And so just now, as we were reading over that, and as I was speaking out loud, I thought that even gives more emphasis to this hard conversation. Can you imagine when you're thinking about everyday hard conversations, a lot of times um, we have decisions to make, we have choices that we've got to do. Um, but how hard is a conversation when you need angelic presence to show up? Yeah. And it says that even though the angel came and strengthened him, he still earnestly had to pray. And it was such a hard answer and such a hard ending that mm -hmm. was answered in that hard conversation that he still was sweating blood. Yeah. Which is, which is a medical thing in real life. If, in case people are wondering, yeah. it actually happens. And people get so stressed to where they can actually sweat blood through their pores. Then you know, that's been a hard conversation. Yeah. 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 And I don't know the, the medical term for it, but I do know um, of people who have actually had that condition. So it is a real thing. Um, and I think what I have noticed um, when people walk that journey, because it is not common, right. um, that there is so much anxiety mm -hmm. and fear and so much heaviness that that person carries, be it the line of work that they do or the type of trauma or the experiences that they've had. This was a traumatic conversation as well. Yes. Um, because it, it was very weighty and there was a lot at stake. Absolutely. One of the other things is that sometimes these things happen when it's pervasive. So it's, they could be cumulative stress. Maybe mm -hmm. there aren't major incidents that occur, you know, at one time, even though one time is enough, mm -hmm. but when there's been weighty things that's gone on for a mm -hmm. long period of time and it's like 
can't take any more of this. It's just too much. Yeah. It's just too much. Yeah. So in this particular instance, though, what we're talking about yeah. is when Jesus had this hard conversation with his father, right? He goes to his dad and he's like, um, you think there's any possible way like I can skip over the whole, you know, going to the cross, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, being battered, being, you know, um, horrible things happening to me. Yeah. Um, is there another way, another possibility, another road we could maybe take? Yeah. And um, yeah, he doesn't necessarily get the answer that he's hoping for. Yeah. So I want to point out, I guess this is the obvious, mm -hmm. but in the scripture, it says that him going to the Mount of Olives, it was a familiar place and it was a place that he went to go and pray. Mm -hmm. And as we know, prayer is a conversation. Mm -hmm. And so he, he had constant communion with God. Yes. So this was not, this was not new for him to go and have prayer and to reach out and to say, God, I know that this is what you're calling me to mm -hmm. because he would go and get strength to go out and heal. Mm -hmm. We see that in the word, but this was a different type of heaviness within their relationship. Yes. But I think a lot of times just to bring this, you know, to reality for real people, mm -hmm. a lot of the hard conversations we have to have are with people who are close to us. For sure, right? Well, it only makes sense that they're going to be the hard conversations that we're having is when people are close to us. Because a lot of times people that are out of that, you know, really familiar circle, mm -hmm. we're not really worried about what they think. And there really aren't any um, major side effects or outcomes or fallout from whether or not, you know, we do things or don't do things with them. So absolutely hard conversations. It's, it's part of you know, the whole idea of being close to someone. There's going to yeah. be times when we have to have hard conversations. None yeah. of us are going to be able to skip them either. Yeah. Um, well, you can. It'll come back and bite you. It, it will. Because it, it, does, it does tend to mushroom. Yes. The longer you wait to address issues, the longer you avoid having difficult conversations, sometimes that's the time when the problems get are worse. Yes, absolutely. Have there been any, you know, I, can't, I know not major specifics, but have you had some cases lately that this has been coming up where you've seen some different outcomes because people haven't been willing or able or can't find the next steps to have those hard conversations? A hundred percent. I think it is um, so common that I have heard um, that there are churches that are um, allowing openness in their space and trainings mm -hmm. for their body and for their, their membership to learn how to have these conversations. So I think it's more common, of course, in our world, we see this probably more frequently than not, mm -hmm. um, because it does raise up so many questions about how a person will be received, if they'll still be accepted. A lot of times when I'm working with families or couples or even individuals, I'll say that, you know, the ultimate goal is to have a healthy circle of people. Yes. And many times when you have to have hard conversations, it's not about avoiding those conversations. It's about how do you get through that time, those conversations and go through it together mm -hmm. and still be okay on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I think many times people don't realize that you have to have many rotations of that. And that builds trust. That also builds uh, the, the, it also builds deeper connection um, when you can do that because you know, Hey, we've been here before we've been, been able to have these conversations and get through it. And that becomes a testimony. Yes. Why do you think people avoid it? Well, it doesn't feel good. Yeah. You know, I think that there is a lot of fear. Um, and I'll also say that many times we make stuff up. I, I have this saying that when people come in and they are trying to be in that other person's head and I'll say, man, you got a doctorate from MSU. You got a doctorate in making stuff up and they'll <laughs> laugh and we'll laugh. But the reality is when we start to assume how we think other people feel or how they'll respond, we have already a preconceived notion of how this conversation is going to go. And sometimes there's a lot of fear that can be increased in that or it'll cause us to back up and not really have the conversation that we really need to have. The other part, I think, is that 
Um, because there are a lot of insecure people in our world, the research says that only 33% of us are secure. So that means the majority of uh, the majority of us are insecure, mm -hmm. which means that these conversations happen more in an unhealthy way. Mm -hmm. And many times we sometimes distract from that point that we really need to find a breakthrough in, mm -hmm. and we end up somewhere else because we allow little things to take us off track in the midst of that hard conversation. Yeah. Sometimes that might be uh, intentional yet subconscious, right? Because mm -hmm. we really don't want to go to that point anyway, mm -hmm. or we're afraid of the answer, which kind of, which kind of leads me into, you know, some of the things that I teach sometimes in my classes. Yeah. And so tell um, us, well, here's the thing is that a lot of times when we have to have hard conversations with folks, mm -hmm. we want to avoid that because of the fear that we have. And like you said, the insecurity. And yes, all of these stories we've already made up in our mind. And so we want to avoid personal responsibility for our feelings and for our behaviors and for the consequences. We don't want to, we don't want to think about, um, what, outcomes. Yes, yeah. outcomes and, you know, how we've behaved and what this proves, right? Right. But the other part of that is, you know, if you don't feel comfortable with your emotions and other people may, for some people that causes them to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe they might get a little loud or maybe they might slam some things around. It's not the best option, but yeah. it can certainly happen. And so a lot of times you're absolutely correct. People will avoid going to those spaces because they're afraid already. And that's based on their trauma, which we'll talk about a little bit later too. Awesome. So another thing when people are having con hard conversations um, is they might shut down um, because they're actually afraid of having somebody disapprove of them. And, you know, the reaction that someone might have. Um, so they might kind of give up on themselves. So they're afraid to say what they need or what they want. And that's another way um, sometimes that people don't get to the point of <laughs> what's yeah. needing to be said. Yeah. So to add to that, um, I think that having a hard conversation has a lot to do with confidence. Mm -hmm. And being able to voice mm -hmm. what is really true mm -hmm. and what are facts. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times, and I don't know if you'll get to this, but a lot of times I'll say um, when you're having hard conversations, start with what it is that you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Don't ever put that on somebody else mm -hmm. because then that creates this dynamic of now you're guessing about somebody else's emotions or you're putting the blame on them. And so having that awareness that um, there can be a stress response in the moment, and we call this hypo arousal, mm -hmm. when a person begins to shut down and back up or freeze or not be able to find the words. And it, it almost comes out sometimes like um, I'm not witty enough or I'm not quick enough or I'm not, I don't have the personality to confront these things because they are so quick with their response or they're so mm -hmm. harsh or they're so mean or they're so quick and I'm a slow processor. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that will cause a person to back up and to really tread backwards trying to get out of a situation, even though it's still a need yeah. for those hard things to be said. But in my classes, I'll, you know, I'll, 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 I'll call people out in a nice way, but I'll say, you know, do you, do you often find yourself laughing when you're uncomfortable? Yeah. And, and that's a very common response. It's absolutely yeah. an extremely common response or to try and make other people laugh, right? To or to divert from the topic. Absolutely. To bring attention to something else. Yeah. Laughter has a whole different connotation it, when there is a serious topic going on. And I think um, for the other person that's experiencing that, it creates some confusion because it ain't funny. It absolutely it can it can it can cause more than just confusion. It can yeah. cause some really bad feelings because absolutely. if they have that doctorate of MSU making stuff Girl, up, yes. right? Then um, when you're laughing and I'm trying to have a serious conversation, well, you've just disrespected me 
or you dishonored me or you don't see me. You don't care about the things that I care about. Yeah. There's just a whole multitude of things that can come um, from that. So I think that this is a good time just to, just to be real practical with our audience. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, I would just say, you know, if you find that you're the type of person that when you're having an uncomfortable conversation, you feel the need to laugh or to make a joke or to divert from that situation, try and ask yourself in the moment, what is happening with me right now? What's going on? What is this touching on? What does this remind me of? What is this feeling like? Why am I feeling like I need to laugh or joke or divert from this situation? And it's hard. That's hard to do when you haven't practiced that. A hundred percent. You know what's coming up for me? And I don't want to cut you off. No, you go right ahead. Um, we're a three part being, right? So mind, soul, spirit, in the secular world, we call mind, body, spirit, right? Um, but being able to check that in real time does allow you to have a faster awareness of what is happening. And so a lot of times I'll tell people to just slow down and take a deep breath. Yeah. And just be aware of the space that you're in, be aware of what's happening in your body and being able to just acknowledge that there are things that are happening that may be from history, right? right? So we don't just start having hard conversations. A lot of times in our primary relationships or our family relationships, we learn the strategy or the dance on how to deal with problems or how to deal with conflict. Um, and sometimes those strategies are maladaptive. Absolutely. Yeah. And when you say maladaptive, it means they're wrong. They, they don't, don't work. They don't work. They're they the busted best. and disgusted and it leaves people hurt in pain and injured. Absolutely. They tore up on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, absolutely. You want um, strategies that work. Right. right. And so when we talk about um, giving the practical, a lot of times when you have an awareness of you, um, you can start to pick up on the person that you're in conversation with or in conflict with mm -hmm. how they are managing themselves, because you can never manage another person. Mm -hmm. You can't do their work for them. You also can't respond in a healthy way for them. Absolutely. But you can set boundaries in the midst of these spaces when you are having hard conversations. Sure. So we're and know, that takes awareness. It does. And and so that's what I was I want to just kind of add to that is that it's not something that you can do right away. Yeah. So if we're just introducing this concept of, you know, um, think about where you are when you're feeling uncomfortable. It doesn't happen easily. It's something you have to make a concerted effort and decision to decide, okay, I'm going to stop doing things the way I've always done it and try to pay more attention when I'm feeling this way and actually take those steps to do that. That's and good. you have to practice it. So you have to practice it, right? Um, I say practice the healthy. Yes. yes. But sometimes, and, and just to give yourself a bit of grace, you're not going to do it right the first time. You're going to fail. In your mind, you're going to say, I'm going to do this the next time. And I'm going to have this conversation. And I'm going to use what I've learned on this podcast, talking to my therapist, talking to my pastor. And we have kind of this response in our head that we've studied. Mm -hmm. And then the conversation takes a turn that we're not ready for and it doesn't fit the strategy that we thought we had because right. it never does. And so it throws us <laughs> off and then we're like trying to fumble. And then at the end of it, we find that we go back to our factory reset mm -hmm. our and default the, our behaviors. default behaviors. And then we beat ourselves up at the end of it. Like, Oh, I should have. I, I almost, I did. I know I wanted to, but I couldn't get the words out. And so give yourself grace in that and knowing that the more that you practice eventually, that the post response will become the pre response. Yes, absolutely. So shoulda, woulda, coulda. I tell my clients, we're not going to should on ourselves today. <laughs> <laughs> we're just not going to do it. Yes. Um, but that also leads to something more proactive. And that is the fact that you guys have permission. You have permission to practice. You have permission to, as a matter of fact, you know, we are in this instant 
microwave world where we think everybody should be quick on the draw, like you said, witty and have all these great responses. You know what? It's okay to sit still for a minute. Somebody asks you a question and it's okay to have an, what we might consider an awkward or uncomfortable silence. Yeah. It, it's, it's completely okay to just be like, I might need to think about that for a minute. I'm not really sure. Yeah. And that's a genuine answer mm -hmm. instead of answering from a place of hurt and pain, yes. because now you fall into a cycle mm -hmm. of harming each other if you lack awareness. And so I love that being able to slow down, take a breath and really consider what you're being asked or what's being said. And one of the things that I, I try to offer my clients and things that I say when I have to have hum hard conversations or there are difficult things being shared with me mm -hmm. um, that may not be helpful. I'll sit and I'll listen. I'll say, hmm. you know, I hear that, but that's not really helpful right now in this situation. Mm -hmm. I do need to think about maybe some solutions because I don't want to respond out of anger or frustration, mm -hmm. but I, I always call out what's not helpful mm -hmm. because if we can call out unhealthy, then it creates a, another boundary, but it also helps that person know, okay, we're not doing our same old dance and it won't be tolerated. Right. That's so good. And honestly, you know, a lot of times that's why hard conversations, that's part of why hard conversations can't go forward because yeah. it's just like we said, that automatic, you know, default behaviors, they're just, we're just bulldozing right through that or, you know, absorbing the same way that we grew up. I call it seeing red. Yeah. Because people black out mm -hmm. <laughs> and they say stuff that they come up out of this trance and they're like, whoo, what did I say? <laughs> and why did I say it? And I lost myself. Lord, forgive me. Um, and, and it happens to people in the church. It happened. Not every, all of our family members or our spouse. A lot of us have that side of the family. Everybody ain't saved. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's a sign. It's like, sure, it's not just the family. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. It might be. Well, for some folks, it might be. So. Know your people. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so that first part, you know, so when we're having this, the MSU, okay, mm -hmm. that when we, when we're standing in this place of believing that what we think is going to be the outcome of the conversation. And that's why we're afraid to have those hard conversations. Yes. That's what I would consider um, basically protecting and defending your stance. Okay. A lot of times we think when you protect and defend, that can be a good thing, but not in car in hard conversations. When you're having, when you're having hard conversations, you don't, you don't want to necessarily go into that conversation already thinking I've got this figured out. It's my way. I'm the only one who's right here. There's no any other possibilities or open doors. And, you know, only what I'm thinking could be the absolute definite outcome of this situation. Yeah. I call those built up brick walls, right? Because there's nothing that is allowed to pass through. Yeah, nothing can penetrate. Nothing walls. can penetrate. And so when you're in a situation um, where you are already built up to only say the part that you want to say and don't have your ears open to hear the portion you need to hear mm -hmm. because in in relationship there are really three parts mm -hmm. the individuals mm -hmm. and the the impact on the relationship and so with that brick wall there is no space for vulnerability mm -hmm. there is no space to see through mm -hmm right? To what that other person might be experiencing. All you see is your own internal awareness. Mm -hmm. And it, it makes, um, it makes for a, a harder time, you know, for that other person to be heard, to be seen, to be understood, to be considered. Um, and usually when those moments happen, it can soften the hardness in conversations. But there, if there is no space, if there is no uh, window or door in this brick wall, there is none of that that can penetrate through. Absolutely. So that really, I mean, that really just kind of plays into exactly what the other opportunity is in hard conversations. 
And that is rather than protecting and defending where you stand and thinking your opinions are the only way and it's your way of the highway. There's also this other place of exploring and understanding. Yeah. And so when we're exploring and understanding, we're going into these hard conversations with this thought that I need to explore where I'm coming from. What are my feelings? What are my thoughts? What am I really wanting the outcome to be? And then also exploring and understanding where the person that you're having this conversation is coming from. And that has, that can have a lot of different layers. So um, it might be that you are open to their influence, you know, not having that brick wall, that you're actually going in with this mindset of it's possible that I'm not seeing everything in this situation. It's possible that the things that I think are most important in this conversation, um, the other person could also have things that are just as valid and just as important mm -hmm. and just as deeply needed and seated as the things I need. Right. Yeah. So we might go, we might decide when I have this conversation, I'm going to open myself up to the willingness to think that maybe I'll allow this person's influence to come in. Maybe, and maybe I can be vulnerable. Maybe I can be open. Maybe um, I can switch over to not necessarily their side, but at least I'll be willing to hear why those things are important to them. And if we want to go even a, a little layer deeper, this is so good, Shadra, is understanding why those things are important to them. So that may relate back to that trauma, that yeah. familial experience, that family of origin, you know, some, some occurrences or events that have happened to them in the past yeah. and what kind of triggers there are. And as to why their perspective is different in that situation um, than what yours is. Yeah. I, you know, I, a lot of times in my classes, I'll just remind folks that true love, really true love. Okay. It cares about what triggers your partner. You're not, yeah. you're not saving up that information to use as ammunition yeah. or, um, or to humiliate them or to bring them low, but you are collecting that information because you want to make sure that you don't go near that land. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, I want to say that you're hitting on such a key point because at some point when a person is in a place of prolonged pain, something shuts off. Yeah for them to not care anymore mm -hmm. about that other person's feelings, their perspective. And it may not be that other person's fault. Mm -hmm. And it may be, there, there may be some components of that that has created the injury. Or maybe a combination of both. Right. Of history, of the relationship, mm -hmm. of, you know, all the stressors that may be ongoing at that time. But when you stop caring, that's a red flag, mm -hmm. right? And so when there, when there is an awareness, which is why it's so key to slow down and take inventory on where you're at, mm -hmm. when you have an awareness that you are numb mm -hmm. to other people's emotions and you don't care about what they have to say, that's work that you have to do on your own. That hard conversation is not going to fix your stuff. Yeah, that's... That's really good. I, I agree 100% with you. As a matter of fact, I would say that when people become indifferent, um, that it's not only a, a hard place to be, but it's a dangerous place to be. Extremely. Yeah. Because you're not only not feeling other people's pain, but you're also not feeling your own. And so a lot of times people will go to risky extremes in order to get mm -hmm. um, a response from both themselves or circumstances or someone else. Mm -hmm. Um, the last thing that when I'm thinking about exploring and understanding when you're going into hard conversations has to do with being willing to explore your own personal beliefs. Mm. I think about, I think we've talked, we touched on this a little bit, um, 
I call it the posters of our heart, right? Okay. So it's, <laughs> it's the, um, it's basically these underlying themes of our life that we've never taken time to explore because it's just, it is in our own mind and our own, our own spirit. It just is what it is. So it could be yeah. things that we, you know, it's our background, it's our experience. And, um, and we've never just really taken the time to pull them out and look at them clearly and see, oh, this is kind of, this is kind of ridiculous. Like this isn't, this should not be a theme or a motto for how I live. Yeah. And so sometimes when we have hard conversations or when we avoid hard conversations, it's mm -hmm. because, it's because we don't want to, we don't want to have clarity about what our, what our foundation is. What well, we'd actually have to explore that and understand, oh, this way of thinking is not, not good. Yeah. I think that, um, we, we've talked about foundations before yeah. <laughs> and sometimes the history that we have can be a bit messy. Mm -hmm. And I think that there is a level of fear sometimes for people mm -hmm. to go back and open up what I call neuro networks. Yes. You know, those parts in our brain, those mm -hmm. parts in our body, this, um, these spaces that we've worked really, really hard to push down. Mm -hmm. Um, but when we start to open it up, mm -hmm. um, and I, I like to just say a plug for therapy, therapy is wonderful to be able to go to, to, to those deep, darker places, to be able to address those things. And I think one of the common things I hear when people go through um, a, a soul healing journey is that they say, why did it take me so long? Mm -hmm. Gosh, and there is there's this sense of like I'm I'm so happy I'm here now and there's a refreshing, but there's also a bittersweetness, like, man, why didn't I know that I could do this before? And so I just want to encourage you to know that it's available to you. Absolutely. Right. You don't have to wait. You know, I think sometimes when um we're in church spaces, and I think this is happening more frequently, where we hear from the pulpit. Um, pastors talking about mental health issues um, and what those experiences may be, but it falls short of the how to yeah. when it comes to addressing those issues. Yeah. And sometimes addressing those issues has has to be done in intimate and private spaces. I would I would say that's the best space, right? I think so too. A, a safe. Yeah, a safe, intimate space with someone that you can trust. Um, none of us want our dirty laundry literally aired out. Um, and I think another reason why, you know, therapy is a good space to do that in is because, like you said, a lot of times other folks' information stops short of what are the steps that need to be taken in order to tunnel my way out of this. Mm -hmm. And you need an individualized treatment plan. <laughs> so sometimes I hear people ask, and there's nothing wrong with self-help books, mm -hmm. but it is meant to address the masses. A broad spectrum. A very broad spectrum. And sometimes the things that are suggested, they're very vague, right? They can give you these top 10 lists or do this, do that. But when it comes to your specific situation, when you meet with a therapist or you meet with a trained provider, that uh, intentionality with that assessment really is meant to go to the spaces that are meant to heal you. Yeah, um, absolutely. So we can find ourselves in same sorts of situations, but it doesn't mean that um, how we got there was the same or the things that we experienced along the way were the same. And some yeah. of those topics that come up could actually go against your healing. They could take you back rather than move you forward. Wow. Depending That's on, a great point. You know, depending on where you are. So I wanted to just say that um, sometimes one of the ways that we can um, know whether a hard conversation is going in the right direction is that we can kind of take mm -hmm. ourselves out of the picture. Okay. And I know that sounds odd, but many times we're afraid to have these conversations. But if I were to say to you, now Shahidra, um, you know what? 
if that was someone else and that was going on, what would you tell them or what would be the answer? And very quickly, it just makes complete sense. It's a black and white situation right. and it seems very, very obvious, mm -hmm. right? But when we put that back on and we're wearing it, mm -hmm. it feels, oh, so hard. Right. Right. So sometimes. Or it gets dismissed like, oh, that doesn't apply to me. Right. right. Oh. <laughs> oh, that would never work for me. Right. <laughs> That's good for the goose is good for the gander. So I, I just, you know, I just like to put that out there because, you know, if you, if there's a hard conversation that you need to have with someone and it, it's about someone that you love, it's, you know, if it's, if it were a hard conversation that you're trying to have or that you need to have and you can maybe put it in a, put it in a different compartment. In other words, if this were happening to my mom, or if this were happening to my daughter or my son or to someone that I really care about, to me, it would make complete sense that we would have this hard conversation because these are, these elements are very important things that people need to know. So if you can kind of unravel yourself from all of the emotion of that situation and just look at it in a factual manner, sometimes that will help you move forward. There's one more thing that I want to address. Okay. Okay. Because in the word, when you were reading the scriptures, yeah, you went back a few verses from what we originally thought. And you mentioned that he told the disciples, now y'all go over there and pray. I'm going to come. I'm going to, he went a stone's throw away and then he knelt down and prayed. So I think that this is a, honestly, it could be easily, it's just as easily overlooked as it can be um, made important in this moment. When you need to have hard conversations, Ooh. wouldn't it be so great if we had good support systems praying also for us? Yes. Before we go into that space and address that hard issue? Mm hmm and I'm so like for it's me, your own personal army yes absolutely yeah. having prayer support you know having um you know some motivational support and i know not every counseling office is like this one um some offices offer you know christian counseling some don't um, many times i have clients that want christian counseling and since i am also um an ordained minister <laughs> and uh, a big word girl. <laughs> I, love, I love God's word. Um, you will find that I'm very interested in praying for my clients and sometimes even with my clients if they, if they want that. Um, and it makes such a huge difference in the outcomes that happen. So yeah, I just, I didn't want that to be skipped over. I think that that was intentional in the word that he had his support coming before he, with him, before he had this really hard conversation, even though he has a great relationship with his father. Yeah. He needed additional support. Yeah. So I want to go back to the scripture mm -hmm. and just reiterate what it is that you're saying. So in Deuteronomy 32 and 30, it talks about one will put a thousand to flight. Two, we'll put 10,000 to flight when God is on our side. Mm -hmm. And so when you enlist your own spiritual army, mm -hmm. you're not only engaging in the natural, but you're engaging in the heavenlies with mm -hmm. the angels who are also petitioning on your behalf. Yes, thank you, Lord. My mom used to say, much prayer, much, much power. results. Okay. <laughs> Mine said, much prayer, much power. Well, <laughs> Those are, those are powerful results. So, we'll take amen. We'll take yeah. So, um, is there anything that we need to just kind of leave our guests with and, and maybe pray or, or um, declare over them this evening? What do you think? So, there's always space and time for that. Absolutely. Well, I just want to say in the name of Jesus, um, I just declare over you a new boldness. If the Holy Spirit has spoken to you during this time about a hard conversation that you know you need mm -hmm. to have for a long time mm -hmm. or even in a short time, um, we just we just agree with you that you have what it takes. You have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
and you have, you've been armed with new information and you have the ability, because if you've been doing this situation in a hard way, in a hard manner for a long time, then you have what it takes to have the hard conversation moving forward so that they can get to that place of relief that you were talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they can, so they can be like, you know, I should have, I wish I would have, but man, I'm glad I have. Yeah. Yeah. So in the name of Jesus, you go forth with boldness and we are standing with you in the spirit. And we're saying you have what it takes to have hard conversations because you have God on your side in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I just decree and declare greater wisdom yes. and greater discernment be with you in those times. Yes. So it's like a heightened awareness that you have spiritual wisdom and spiritual discernment to say what needs to be said at the right time and the right place to the right people and your words will strike the mark in Jesus name. Amen and amen. This has been another awesome episode of Midnight Mastermind Ministries podcast. Just know we are encouraged by your your comments with the show. You are a blessing to us. We will continue to be a blessing to you. Thanks for joining us tonight. And you can follow us on YouTube. You can follow us on Instagram as well as Facebook at Midnight Mastermind Podcast. Midnight Mastermind Ministries. Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> God bless y'all. Y'all have a good night. <laughs>